Hello, hi, sweet, lovely people. My name is Jess Marie and welcome to a house coat talk. That's what I'm gonna call these new little Jess talks because I literally am almost always in my house coat when I film because it's just, it's something that feels so good to do first thing in the morning. Whatever's running through the mind, whatever is just hanging on that needs to be exerted, that needs to be get, begotten, that's not how you use the word. How to get rid of those ideas, how to lose the thoughts of negativity or thoughts that are just hanging on that, that needs to be expanded or talked about. Maybe it's not always negative things. Maybe it's, it's things that are ideas that need help to expand. Right now, a lot of things that I'm trying to clear out of my mind are negative things. <laughs> I use that word way too much in my, my life, but I am super sensitive to that kind of energy right now. And I'm very aware when people are, are expressing it and have that kind of context behind when they, when they speak and there's that, that energy behind what they say. And it's just like, hmm, you can feel it. It radiates and. I think everybody can can sense that they choose to or to not but I I watched this video and some people are iffy about tarot readings and I know that uh, my partner Rob he is like no no tarot like don't have it in the house kind of deal and that's fine I I accept that that's cool but I mean when I, when I say I accept it it's something that I understand where he comes from and his beliefs and who am I to tread over that kind of deal. So I do, I watched this one person, Amphrodite, on YouTube and he does all kinds of tarot readings on celebrities, on other influencers, he will do things of the month or whatever. I don't watch him that often because it's something that I'll get sucked into and base my life around it and that's not what it is for me. That's not what tarot is for me. I see tarot as an opportunity when somebody is practicing reading tarot, I will sit down with them, hey, yeah, let's do a reading. And um, that's how I enjoy it. And he done this year uh, 2021 predictions. And it's like two hours long. I really suggest you check it out if you're interested and you haven't clicked off my video already. But he, for Scorpio, he talked a lot about shedding off this mesh of of falsery, of, of this self that no longer serves us and morphing into a, an authentic self. And with that, there will be a very strong friendship that occurs that will help morph the Scorpio into that being, that entity. And I've been, and he's really positive it's gonna happen at the beginning of the year. And I, this is why I don't trust tarot too, 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 too much or rely on it too, 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 too heavily because this is something that I've longed for since I moved to town. It has been so long. My first year in town, it was, so I moved here summer of 2018 and then it was winter, it was like January, February-ish, even probably December, January-ish. I kept seeing this this woman and I knew who she was. I worked at a restaurant, it was like a bar restaurant and she was a regular there, oh, regular enough that we knew who she was and she had this very loud outgoing voice. She hung out with the gal downstairs and just we get drunk and did mushrooms one time and there was glass shattered all, all over our outdoor. There's like in our yard, there's a slab of concrete and a picnic table. There was glass shattered all over there. We got dogs, so it's like, what the fuck, you know, like just kind of choked about that and, you know, being ignorant at 2.30 in the morning. She was a part of that. But I kept seeing her and I was like, Oh, you know, I'd be doing something like singing to myself, walking through the forest, and I have a flower, which is like a little spirit guide for me, and she would show up, and it was like, oh, no, like, you led me to her. What is, like, and it kept happening. It happened nearly four or five times, and I, I finally, she told me she does yoga. She's teaching yoga. She has a space 
for three months and if money is a thing of concern like don't worry about paying for it the space is already paid for oh no oh. <laughs> that build up hey so she was really she was kept coming up in my life and I didn't want it to be her I didn't want her to be my guide or my opening and I really refused that because I talked to grandma about it grandma she's my non-blood grandma and she's a uh, she's very spiritual she she's both spiritual in the first nation sense and she's also spiritual in the Christianity religion sense so I, I love that balance because I feel like I fall into that and I'm having a really difficult time balancing that out in my life so I talked to her about it and she she said to me like Jess you know I don't go to the powwows anymore because there's people who will go to the powwows and be dancers but then the other times of the year when it's not powwow season they're getting drunk and they are using, they're doing all these kind of things and you can't be like, it, like it, it doesn't make sense to be this spiritual dancer. She told me all about the, the dancing and why it's important and sacred. Ugh. It's not. <laughs> and it was something where it was like, you know, she, she gave advice to accept who this person is, the teacher. And take take the knowledge that needs to be taken from, but don't allow full trust in this person. Stay weary and understand that they are also on their own journey. They're not in a full position of teaching. So with that being said, <clears throat> I felt a little bit more good loosening up and and feeling comfortable and they do what's called medicine wheel every year and it goes through all four directions and each direction is representative of a quarter of the month or a quarter of the year and then there's also an animal that is related to it and you go through these different journeys and build uh you break down some of your character you talk to your ancestors your um the generations before anything that's suffering before you try you do your best to heal the wounds and then you go on to your spiritual journey within the other directions i never got the chance to do it because i couldn't afford it and there was only so many student scholarships that i just i wasn't in a position and i felt if it was right the universe would have gifted that to me but I don't think it was right. And I do believe that I'm too young still. I was 21 at the time. Maybe I was 20. No, I was 21. I'm pretty sure. I might have been 22. But irrelevant. So at the time, I was just too young. And and even now at 23, I still believe that I'm too young. I'm on this journey of, of learning. And I think it'll be at least till I'm about 40 where I'm in a position where I feel comfortable with teaching other people of what I've learned. And we can still do this at a younger age, but coming from a place more of of listening and understanding and not trying to be the teacher, that's a big thing. So right now I'm really, I haven't had that since. So it's 2021. This happened, what, 2018 going into 2019, 2019 going into 2020. So it's been about two years and I haven't found someone there's no reoccurring pattern or theme with anybody and maybe I don't put myself out there enough that I haven't found anybody who is like a guide, who is a teacher to me. I've gotten closer and developed my relationship with Jesus Christ a lot more and I'm doing a lot better for him and my devotion towards him. Reading and trusting him and praying to him, I'm doing a lot better with that. But there's still I keep out like I really would like this physical form to be here this physical form of teaching because I I need that I really do need that and I I pray so often that it, the person will show up and it'll just be like this moment of bliss and I can cry in their arms and tell them that I love them for who they are <laughs> And it'll just be this beautiful moment. And sometimes I think that might be too much to ask for. You know what I mean? But it's like going somewhere to 
for a shaman and being a teacher, being a student of that shaman for a couple of months, I want that so bad. I want it so bad. And now I feel like my time is like, I don't want to lose this, this want and this drive because I'm soon going to be a mom and priorities are going to change. And I want to be able to take care of my inner self and help my spirit grow and expand and have this open mind of blooming flowers that I can give to the world. I want that so bad, but I, f I don't want to run out of time because baby's going to come and then baby's going to need attention. And I, I really do need to meet this person and I don't know who it is. I don't know where they are and it's a weird time of the world. So they're going to come up in a really, really different way that I wouldn't expect, but I am, I'm very in belief that the prediction Amphrodite made I do really, that was a great sign for me to hear. I am so holding on to that. I really, really am holding on to that. So, all we can do is, is pray for the best. And, yeah. One day I'll find my tribe and find a teacher who aligns with what I believe in and even if they don't align with what I believe in there's some kind of understanding there's no judgment there's no oh you believe in Jesus you believe in the birth of Jesus being the son of God you know there's no need for it there's no need for judgment of other people's spirituality and their beliefs because we're all different and we're all unique and when we use that as a a fighting force that sh that's weakness for somebody when somebody is insecure about another person's beliefs that that's a weakness on them and I I don't know what else more to say that's one thing that people should just stay away from don't talk about you well you can talk about your beliefs and your spirituality but there's no need to, oh okay I don't really know too much about it and it's not really my topic. I believe something different and I don't want to get conflicting. Like I love you enough. I don't want to get conflicting here. And that's enough. Sometimes it might feel like weird blood, but different beliefs. Sometimes people can't handle other people's beliefs of the world. Some people can't handle the idea of their possibly being more than one God. Some people can't handle the idea. Maybe there's no God. You know, there's different ideas and beliefs in the world. And that's something, yeah, it does shape who someone is as a person. And it does say a lot about them. But on the other hand, too, there's so many other characteristics characteristics and qualities of somebody that, that show that. That show who they are as a person. It's not all just about beliefs. Sometimes there's different religions that... You know, it's a little bit, uh, you know what, I need to stay away from this. This is not, how you're reflecting this is not aligning with me and I need to take a step back because you're really aggressive about it. We know some people who are very aggressive about some things. We need to take a step back and say, hey, this isn't healthy for me to take in. Not because I, I'm disagreeing with your belief. But the way that it's being presented to me, I'm I'm unable to take it in and it's making me feel anxious, scared, nervous, high heart rate, whatever it may be, right? There's a way to handle it and talk about religion and spirituality without making peop it, it a war, you know? There's, there's no need for a war on beliefs because at the end of the day, it's all philosophy. It's all philosophical belief. It's all stuff that we, we adopt and expand on over time and we all have our different opinions. So, with that being said, this is my first house coat talk. So, thank you all for listening. I'm probably going to get my one person who watched this, maybe two. Ah, oh, thank you all so much. <laughs> Bye!